All right, looks like we're a little ahead of schedule, which is great. I'll try and get you out early for lunch. I uh, don't want to be the person that's holding you back from lunch. I've been chided for that before. Um, so today, you know, th this is called a deep dive into HED data sanitization. You know, given the time allowed, um, really it's more of an, or an invitation to come and get more involved in this. And what we're trying to do is create a path to circularity. So my name is Ari Vanderhoeven. I'm a principal project manager with Seagate Technology. Um, you know, I'm representing Seagate here, but I think I'm also representing other groups, including IEEE 2883 committee, including the Circular Drive Initiative, including the Sustainability Group. Um, so I'm wearing a few hats here in this talk. And uh, you know, my background is varied. Um, I actually come from a software background, kernel background. Um, and you know, back in 2012, I was a chief evangelist for um, bringing UEFI, uh, moving from BIOS to UEFI and Secure Boot. Um, so I do have a, a speckled um, but significant security background as well. So why now? Why, why are we talking about this today? And you know, OCP members have big cl climate goals. They have zero waste goals and circularity can help, and circularity is coming. I mean, uh, security has always been paramount. And we're now starting to see from the boardroom, from customers, um, a movement, gradual, but it's coming, um, to where we can't be in this case that we are today, where we're you know, literally shredding tens of millions of drives. You know, if you look back, say, five to seven years ago, there were 165 million 3.5 HDD drives shipped each year. Um, most of those that go into enterprise or data centers um, are shredded, and most of them have usable life left. Um, if you look at the carbon impact of, of, of reusing a drive um, versus recycling based on this study, you know, 275 times the carbon reduction as recycle. So there's significant impact here. We really cannot see how companies can meet their zero waste and their carbon goals without, without, without approaching this in the next 10 years. So let's start with some basics. You know, the information here, um, we're, we're gonna talk to Seagate HDDs because that's, you know, we can't really speak for other vendors, um, but it may apply to other manufacturers as well. Um, we're only gonna talk about modern drives, you know, I can show you some studies from drives that are 10 years old um, that you could load unsigned firmware on, for example. You know, you could, there's lots of things you can do. Um, we're also not gonna get into all the terminology. There's a lot of what I call FUD out there um, around uh, drive security, and we're gonna try and cut through that. And you know, the places to go are places like IEEE 2883. Um, we're gonna to talk today about two models of data purge, and we'll get into the terminology of purge later, but mostly sanitize overwrite because most drives today, that's what they support. Um, we need and we're pushing for all drives to support cryptographic erase, um, preferably as SED, self-encrypting drives, or instant secure erase drives. Um, these support 256-bit AES XT or XTS, um, by one study, and, and like every mathematician student in the world, you know, takes, takes a shot at this. Um, I saw one study where they had it being something like 14,000 years for every computer on Earth to break, um, you know, a single drive uh, encrypted by this. So, you know, there's always, there's, there's always the unknown chance of something happening in the future, but I think it's fairly accepted that uh, this form of, of cryptography is, is robust and quantum compute resi resilient. Um, we're also inviting folks who disagree or, you know, I always hear a rumor of somebody who knows somebody at the, at the um, NSA who has an opinion that's different, and that's okay. Um, so when we look at sanitization methods, we're gonna talk to, we're not gonna talk to Clear. You know, Clear is just formatting a drive. Um, there are, you know, if we look at markets like Indonesia, 70% um, of the drives sold in Indonesia are white label. They're, they're reused drives. And if they've done a simple format, there are tools out there that are easy to go out and reclaim uh, data. So if, you know, if I were to be, a, if I were to turn to uh, 
cyber crime, I might move to Indonesia and start buying drugs. Uh, purge um, is the focus today, and purge is really what you know, NIST 888 standard that was released in 2014, and now IEEE, the international standard released in 2022, focus on purge. And this is really, you know, the language here is that it's infeasible um, to recover data with state-of-the-art techniques. Um, and it leaves the device in a usable state. So the idea is that if you, you know, unless you have your most sensitive data, and you really should be tiering your data, you've got, you've got videos, you've got user data like Facebook, and then you've got financial data or national security data, you know, you might treat those differently and go after the soft data first. Um, and then destruct is what happens today. And what's interesting is um, in an IEEE conversation this week, we, we were looking at uh, information from the NSA where they're changing their guidance from two millimeter shreds to 0.5 millimeter shreds. And that is, uh, that's because there can be so much data on a tiny shred of, you know, like a two millimeter shred can have seven Encyclopedia Britannicas, you know, in PDF form. You know, and if you have, uh, you know, what we call, and here, if you look here, the nightmare, the unlikely, um, and the almost impossible, maybe that, maybe for um, destruct, it's, it's more like unlikely, you know. So data security is a barrier. We know it. It's a sticky bit. This is the hardest conversation we've been having for the last two years as we start to push towards circularity, towards reselling drives. Again, most of these drives have a lot of use left, especially nearline drives. They're resilient drives. They're made to last. In a second use, they can last for years. Um, but we know there's, 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 there's you can, it's a losing customer data can cost a billion dollars. You know, some, we hear that five nines of trust is not enough. There's that trust between the CSP and the customer. You know, there's a reputation. Then there's compliance, legal, liability issues. Um, uh, I can go on and on. We know, we know, and we hear it. What we want you to do is engage, and especially the hyperscalers and the OEMs, because a lot of us in these groups who are out there working, you know, we're, we're look, looking around and we're a whole bunch of storage guys, right? Uh, and sustainability guys. But um, we aren't getting the security community from the big players involved. So data sanitization, you know, process or method to render um, access to target data on storage infeasible for a given level of effort. You know, so we use the proper terms and we understand it. Um, the big organizations, you know, I, again, top of the list here, IEEE 2883. We're working on 2883.1. It's a very active committee. We, again, we're kind of lopsided in the folks who are there. You know, a lot of storage guys, um, you know, people very interested in sustainability, some data recovery folks. We, we could use more investment um, from the security community and, and hard questions. You know, IEEE uh, 283 only, only addresses host accessible data. So we'll talk a little bit later about, you know, uh, other methods of getting data and what the risks are. Um, so this is just a quick slide on what happens, you know, because most drives today don't support cryptographic arrays. Um, we're looking here at, uh, you know, at the most common case today where you have to sanitize overwrite using ATA, you know, if there's a write error, we do our best to, to recover and overwrite the data or, or, or commit it to a different, different location. You know, if that fails, uh, if all that fails um, and we're not, not successful, then the host, you know, has to treat this as an unrecoverable drive. And I know Jeff Anderson and others have been talking about attestation for sanitization, which is a great idea. Because you don't want to like, have a drive that gets tossed in the wrong bin and hasn't been properly sanitized. You know, so making sure that there, that, the, that, you know, today we've been working on certificates for sanitization that hasn't really been adopted a lot. So we're really, really looking favorably at some of the, some of the efforts coming from the security group. And we'd love to see more and more of that. Um, there's also, uh, you know, also this idea of safe. Um, I'd say that for storage, um, because we have to go through, you know, uh, 
we have to go through, th you know, so much certification. You know, if it's a cryptographic erase drive, we have to go through FIPS and common criteria. Um, those are very high levels of third-party examination of, of our firmware. Um, and also, we do that for all our drives. We have third-party audits, and I believe that's common across, you know, the, the three major hard drive vendors and probably most of the flash vendors, SSD vendors. So PCBAs are interesting to us because, you know, we get a lot of what we call virtual returns, where we don't get the drive back, but we, uh, you know, the drive failed. And the PCBA is really valuable to us. I mean, it's, it's, it's tens of dollars. And it's also, you know, if you're, look, if you're looking at zero waste goals, if you're looking at carbon savings, boy, there's, there's a lot, lot of the, the embodied carbon sits in that, in that, in that piece. Um, if, you know, what's preserved on there, um, if you do a sanitized overwrite, you know, we'll, we'll, obviously we keep the firmware, the failure analysis data, the logs, um, the only possible thing, and, and, and we'll get rid of the scram data, the data that might be left because of an abrupt shutdown or something like that that could contain user data. Now, if you can, if you can sanitize that, or if you trust us to securely ship that to us, and to recover scram data would take you know, extreme, you know, you, you, again, you're looking at many nines of effort to for the possibility of that to A, contain anything important, and B, to actually be recovered or someone to take the effort, it's just silly that we throw these things away. And they're easy to unscrew and return. So we would love to get PCBAs back. I'm sure uh, the other hardware vendors would as well for failure analysis. So if you wanted to make a big splash in circularity, um, let's consider returning PCBAs. So looking at on-disk memory, you know, when you do a sanitized overwrite again, this is not cryptographic erase. Um, it, you know, the, the only data that we don't sanitize overwrite, of course, are any encryption keys, which if you have encryption keys, you're probably doing cryptographic erase. We keep the logs because we need that. Um, we erase everything else, but, you know, the pushback we've gotten is th there's not really a way to validate via, you know, via readback. Now we do do third party, um, and we'll show you some third party certificates where we guarantee it. Um, but again, there, there's a, there's a, you know, we're trying to be, you know, full open kimono here and t tell you what you can and can't do with these drives when you do a sanitize overwrite. So, you know, earlier we were looking at what the nightmare scenarios were. I think that was this slide right here. Um, in Nightmare, we're really talking about like, a, like a, a, a nation state or a very advanced third party who's willing to go to the ends of the world um, to somehow get bits off of drives. And then you really have to think, well, what's there and how much effort would it take, even if you have the, these advanced methods, um, you know, how many thousands or tens of thousands of drives would you have to acquire and, and, and examine to get any bits of, of reasonable data off of them, um, especially if they've gone through a sanitized overwrite or something like that. The, um, you know, it, sanitized overwrite does not guarantee or attempt to get everything off the drive. Um, there are some factors, you know, we could have a transient error, a thermal event, or a vibration event where you're, 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 you write off track and then when you do a sanitized overwrite, that's not accessible to the host. So the data could still be there, you know. Um, whether or not someone would ever try and go after that, I don't know. Whether there'd be data there that's usable, I don't know. Um, but we want to get everyone in that conversation. Um, and, you know, I could go on and on. You know, these still, sanitized overwrite still meets the IEEE 2883 standard because none of this, this, this is something where you'd have to find these drives. You know, again, if I was a cyber criminal, I would just look for drives. Again, I'd go to Indonesia or someplace where they probably haven't gone through the purge, the full purge. Um, also to address this concern, if we have a, at Seagate, we have a buyback program. And we actually remanufacture the drive. And it goes through a really intensive process. Um, we establish new tracks. We, you know, we, we do overwrites at offsets from the, from the previous location, so we're probably, 
you know, adding one or two more nines of certainty that all that data is gone. Um, and, and I don't think anyone, you know, we, our reputation, if we resell a drive, our reputation stands behind it. So this is, this is the standard that we require if we're gonna resell a drive. Um, this is an example of the third-party certification. We've done several of these. This one is for NIST 888, um, which is for guidelines. We did this on a 16 terabyte drive. Um, I didn't add it in here, but more recently we've been doing this uh, for two terabyte drives because we have some two terabyte drives that, are, are, that we're actually reselling. And those we did against IEEE 2883, which, you know, What's interesting is NIST 888, those are guidelines. IEEE is an international standard, and it also has requirements, not just guidelines. So it's a little, little firmer. Um, we actually had to, to make, you know, fix a bug in our, in our software that we use. And you know, there's different software you can use. Um, there's C-Chest and Open C-Chest, our open source uh, from Seagate. Um, Blanco is another great company. They've been doing this for 25 years. So I'll give them a shout out, even though we compete with them. Um, so, you know, there are companies you can trust um, to purge your data. So, you know, this is probably the, my, my biggest call out is we're looking for partners, security partners and sustainability. We're really in two different worlds. I think, I think we're starting to inter, inter, interact a little bit. Um, but IEEE, you know, we, we really, really could use more diversity. You know, we have a great group of folks that are very knowledgeable, um, but the more security you know, expertise and opinion we have there is important. NIST, I'm not too worried about. You folks are all in NIST. Um, the Circular Drive Initiative, um, another slide on that with more, more detail. The Sustainability Group, you know, last year, uh, we published a paper on data sanitization for the circular economy. And it's a good read and it's a good primer. And it speaks to a lot, a lot of, it doesn't go into the, the deep dive stuff. And I, unfortunately, given the time here, I'm not either. Um, but if you want to come talk to Seagate or you want to come talk to another company, we'll sit you down with the engineers who can go really deep into this stuff. I mean, we go into like, you know, our key wrap methods and, and you know, earlier someone was talking about the, uh, the um, Calyptra and how far they go. And I, I know exactly what they do and what they don't do. And that's stuff that we keep very proprietary, but we also do it according to NIST standards. Um, and it's something you know, a lot of security folks really care about. Again, Circular Drive Initiative, just look at some of the companies that are involved here. Um, call out to, well, Bill McDonough is a Longtime leader in the industry for, for sustainability and circularity. He started this, but right there you got Western Digital, Seagate, Micron, Chia, and then a whole bunch of other members. And we'd like to get, you know, if you look at the names here, we'd like to get some bigger names involved. So the call to action, you know, it's coming. Um, it's coming from the boardroom, uh, it's coming from the moonshot goals, you know. You know, carbon goals, the zero waste goals, we have to get to a world where we're not shredding tens of millions of drives a year that have usable life left. Um, it's, just, it's just not good for the environment and, and we, can, you know, we, we can get past that, that hard security bit um, or at least we can make progress. Um, really, I, I, sh I should put here again, let, let's, let's start moving to self-encrypting drives, SEDs. Uh, or instant and secure race drives, that should be standard across the industry. And, and we're pushing really hard on that. Um, let's get more cross-pollination with the OCP Sustainability Group, join the Circular Drive Initiative, join IEEE 2883, and, um, and we've got some, got some other follow-up here. So with that, I'm gonna finish up and let me know if you have any questions. Yeah, well, OnTrack's a data recovery company. 
Um, so they, they basically search for anything that is accessible to the host. So they will go to extreme methods, but they will not go to like the method of, say, taking an optical device and you know, putting, put, taking the disks off, putting them on a spin stand, looking for data in the tracks. That's what they don't do. Um, but, but everything else, I'd probably refer you to OnTrack. I don't know if anyone from OnTrack is here. They were still using host-based methods to... They are, uh, yeah. Right? They didn't have access to your source code. They... they did have access to our source code. They did. Yeah, yeah, they have access to our source code, um, which is a big part of it. I, I, um, you know, if, if, you, if you want to talk to me, I can, I can get, again, we are looking for engagement. I have a whole deck on that. And, and there's quite a bit that they do. We just didn't have time today to cover all that. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, thanks for this. Uh, it's definitely high impact stuff. Um, the discussion around how to combine attestation with sanitization kind of veered into uh, using SPDM to report a bit, saying whether or not any data has been written. Uh, is that the right track, do you think? Is that recommendable and simple? I think it is. You know, we, 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 we at Seagate, we have, we've already done a POC for SPDM attestation in general, for like firmware attestation. Um, so we, that's new to us, and thank you for bringing it up. Our initial thoughts is SPDM is the right way in, in Redfish. That, that makes a lot of sense to us. So yes, thanks, Jeff. It's, it, it, we would love to. As a matter of fact, we were, we were we, our mantra is right now is ICE is base. In, in another drive generation, it's gonna be SED is base, it's, but it's what the customer asks for. And, and right now, you know, we have a variety of customers. There are concerns in places like China. And, and in China, we're actually, they don't trust IEEE, so they're doing an SC, uh, CESI specification that we're funding. Um, you know, so that so that they have their own their own version of IEEE 2883. So it's it's just the customer. We would love to ship. You know, th thank you for asking that because we would just love to ship everything as SED, and we don't charge extra for it anymore. We used to. Um, what's funny is like back in 2012, I was at Microsoft pushing um, UEFI and Secure Boot, and and I was saying, you know, look, in two or three years, every drive is going to be SED, and I was off by over you know over a decade but we're, we're trying to get there. Thank you for sharing your insight about reusability. My question is uh, specifically about self-encrypting drives. These drives have some security anchors inside the OTP or EPUs. I give you example like uh, revocation key bits or a device unique secret and product ID. Is there any thought about how go around it or are the customers comfortable using reuse drive that have, uh, if it was burned for another customer? Yeah, you know, that, that's a good question. I think we're looking mostly at, at one or two reuses. Um, uh, you know, that, that's a problem we'd like to have, um, but it hasn't really come up yet. So th there are lots of, you know, if, if we're successful and we, and we, and, and we move to SEDs, and we do a lot of reselling drives, there are a lot of problems we'd like to have. Like maybe we, maybe we start cannibalizing our own business. Mike, at, sorry, Seagate, we don't care at the, up, up to the executive level. You know, for us, sustainability is first. If we cannibalize our own business, that's, that's something we're gonna have to do. Uh, so essentially the same question that we spoke about earlier. So um, we have these e-fuses in the drives, uh, especially for these security keys. So um, do we lo uh, lower the, the TC or the total cost of ownership by reusing, by just adding more uh, e-fuse? And so that if we have to do this secure erase, the secure erase op operation also inculcates a revocation of the, the keys in the e-fuse. And then on, we use, say, a secondary e-fuse or, or additional. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think the keys have to be in the e-fuse, um, but uh, you know we don't want to add cost. Um, so that's, a, that's actually that's a question I'm going to take back. And and if you if you if you have my contact information, 
Uh, let me follow up with my team on that one. Uh, I'm, 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 going, I'm going to say, you know, I'm a, I'm a project manager on this one. There, there are folks I wish I'd brought with me who could answer that better. No, absolutely. Since, like, certain keys need to be in the e-fuse, like the AES, GCP, and the key manifest. Yeah. So those, uh, at least that memory we dedicate. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> I'm just happy we're getting to this question, this type of question. This is exactly what I'm asking for. Um, so we're asking for more engagement, and that, that can come, you know, these are the types of questions that'd be great to bring up in IEEE 2883, uh, in the Circular Drive Initiative, and other things. So thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I think you made the assertion that too many drives are being shredded. Um, do we have an understanding, quantifiable gap between what it would take to not shred these drives and where we are today, and is there a way to measure the goal and the gap? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned, you mentioned nines. You know, is a nines thing a measurable thing, or is this more uh, of a quantifiable yeah. kind of quantifi thing? Or? You, you, you know, it's it's it, it that's 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 the you know sixty four thousand dollar question is is how do we get there? You know, we've talked we've talked to folks who say, look, we can tier our data into what's most sensitive and what's least sensitive, and then have a target in between. That's you know, I, right now, my feeling is is today, like at Seagate, we're trying to reuse a million drives a day. My goal, you know, probably my stated goal, would be to get to five and then 10 million um, drives rebought of those of, of those tens of millions. You know, that would be a start. And to me, that's a, unfortunately that's a three to five year goal. Um, I think John Michael might be more aggressive. <laughs> And he wears the SEDs. I should have him come up and answer this as well, if you want to. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, it, 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 I think that's maybe for, for let's, let's make that a goal for next year's OCP talk. It's a great question. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.